Hey GeoVox users, this is Rampa. In this tutorial today, we're going to take a look at the noise generator to significantly alter your terrain. The first thing I like to do when I'm starting to alter my terrain is turn off my forest so I don't have to see it. Um, it's nice to have the forest on if you're generating actual terrain you're going to use, but for this demo it's easier if we don't have the forest visible. So I'm just going to go over into my block type section and delete the one that says forest. And then I'm going to refresh my world. And then I have a world without trees. The grass is fine. I'm going to leave it be. So we have our world here all around us. And what I want to do is be able to change how the mountains are. Um, the default terrain is quite nice, but sometimes you want a different kind of terrain, maybe a flatter terrain or a steeper terrain. So we will go over and we will go ahead and close the block types. We're not even going to be using them. We're not going to be using the grass types. We're just going to be using the generator section and specifically the noise section. Um, the texture section, as far as I know, works with the noise section, not completely independently. So I have to look into that a bit more before I can do a tutorial on it. So today it's noise. When we look at the noise settings, first um, we get to determine what material we're working with primarily. Um, and I always just leave this at cliff because, you know, the world is built out of big rocks primarily. And then I am most interested in the noise amount, the noise size, and the detail. Now the noise amount is basically just kind of like a volume dial. It's if you have it down at zero, there is no noise being applied to the terrain at all. So basically you'll end up with a huge flat plane. Let me go ahead and generate that. In fact, I'll set them all down to zero just so we can see. So all three of them down to zero and I'm going to say generate and yes, and it's going to take a minute. And you can see it made a big flat plane. And we can't even see it because of the fog. Um, so I'm going to turn my fog off. Control F turns the fog off. It's also up in the menu under settings right there. Um, so you'll see it made a big flat plane. And it actually dropped it down quite a bit. It's actually below the horizon plane. Um, this wall out here is created by the horizon plane, which you can set in the settings down here. You can set the elevation of the horizon plane, or you can just turn it completely off. I usually turn it completely off because I'm not a big fan of it, but um, sometimes you might want it on there. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice it clipped my area in a bit when I did that too. So I was seeing just exactly... Um, you know, the 300 meters square here. It looks like a lot smaller because of the size of the texture. This difference you're seeing here is where it's dropping into low resolution for distance because when you have the fog on, um, then it would occlude that lower resolution part. And that's why we have the fog. So anyway, I have this um, big drop block here and I've got it you know, completely flat. And if I go back to my generator into the noise section and I put the noise amount completely at the top. Okay, this is like a maximum amounts of noise. Um, and then I have the noise size at zero. Let's see what that does. Okay. I again have a flat plane. Well, that's pretty interesting. What's different about this flat plane? Well, it's a meadow for one, but if I look over here, it's raised it completely up. I'm no longer dropped down below the horizon. I'm way up high. Well, the, the reason it's way up high is because I have the noise amount way up high. And so basically think of, of you know, as your volume goes down, your terrain gets lower overall. Now the noise size, if I put this at 250, going back to noise amount for a moment, 
um, you know, close to 250, and then I generate my world, you'll see it's about the height of the surrounding disk at, when I do that. And, it, you know, it's dropped below the other mountains that are in adjacent areas at this point. So that's when my, you know, I've got a medium volume here, basically. And so now I want to start adding in the different notes of my music or the different kind of, um, you know, the different sections of noise. If you think of the noise size as zooming into noise, so like if you're far away, it looks pretty small, but if you get up close to it, the noise looks pretty big. So think of the noise size as kind of a zoom for the noise. And if I bring it up now, I'm going to set it also about in the middle. And then I'm going to hit generate. You'll notice it had an effect. It brought the level up um, just a tiny bit and it tilted it a little bit. I can see the land is tilted, but if you look at the pattern on it, it you can see kind of the, the basic noise pattern here. Now, that's going in and out of it. If you want to actually change that noise pattern, then you use the detail. The detail is what really makes your landscape come alive because that is how noisy it is or quiet it is. And right now when it says zero, it's very quiet, so you're not seeing much. I'm going to bring this up a bit to about half and then generate my world again. There, now we immediately have some up and down hills. It's not really steep at this point, but I can make it more so. Um, I can bring the detail up a bit more and it should be kind of noisier hills at that point. They probably will get a little taller as well. There, so now the noise is really tight and convoluted. Um, really, 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 it's, it's like, you know, get, getting towards um, white noise, you know, it's kind of totally random. So it's good not to get things either maxed out or minimumed out, but play somewhere in between. And it's, these settings work best when you're using all of them, of course, as well. So, um, you know, my noise amount is pretty good. My volume level, basically. My noise size, I'm going to bring it down a little bit, I think. And then the detail, I don't want too crazy either. So I'm going to bring that down. Um, you can also put in numbers directly into the boxes, double click on them, and you can put a number directly in um, if you want to, instead of using the sliders. But frankly, the sliders are probably more fun for this. So now that I've re reset these, I am going to generate my world. And now we're back to a much tamer terrain, but you know we have some nice valleys. It sinks down over here. Remember, this is not actually the voxel terrain. That's the horizon terrain that kind of tends to match up with your voxel terrain. Um, so you have a nice horizon. And so now if I bring my noise amount up, I'm going to crank up the volume and we're going to see what that does to a hill. See, the, the mountains are much higher now, and the valleys, you know, the valleys would probably be deeper as well. And you'll notice I'm up higher than the other terrain because um, I'm up at a, almost max out volume here. So basically, if I raise up a bit now so we can see the terrain, you can see it, it just made the whole terrain um, louder. So there, there's my terrain now. Um, and that's maybe louder than I need, but, you know, that's the kind of train I like. It's pretty fun to fly over that kind of train. There is a fly mode you can use now. It's up in the, um, settings menu, I believe, up here. We can do fly mode. And let's turn fly mode on, and then we can just move the mouse around to, you know, look around, and we can still fly. And 
So that makes it really easy to fly over your terrain. See how exaggerated the up and down of my terrain is. I'm way up on a mountain, and then this valley is really way down deep down here. Um, that's because of the volume being really increased. So anyway, I hope this has been a helpful tutorial for you in understanding how to alter your terrain with the noise. And till next time.